David Dobrik's Views podcast acquired by Spotify for $100 million. And disclaimer, Samir was not actually reading an article. That's not a real headline just yet. But it is a prediction, and we're going to talk about why we think that could happen, and we're also just going to talk about video podcasting in general. But we start the show off by talking about our experience hosting a clubhouse room with Mr. Beast, answer some of your questions from Twitter, and give you some company news. There are some chapter markers. We do cover a lot here, so if you're interested, you can skip around, check out the chapter markers right here. And it would help us a lot if you liked the video before we rolled the intro. All right. Thanks for doing that. Roll the Again, intro. Again, I don't know if that was enough time. Colin, I was just in the middle of saying roll the intro, I know, which but is I just a very exciting like part of the ask someone to Roll the intro. Man, audio is so big this year. Everywhere. I guess it's been big for a while, but I think Clubhouse is making it feel really big. And when you say big for a while, you mean the beginning of time. Yes. Audio storytelling yeah, has like, been around <laughs> since people can, could talk to each other. Yeah. Video is new. Audio we've had since the beginning. So we're recording this the day after we hosted a room on Clubhouse. We were on the Good Time Show uh, with Mr. Beast. Previous guests of the Good Time Show were Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, BJ Novak, and now Mr. Colin Beast, Samir and Mr. Beast. Joined by Colin and Samir. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Makes so, perfect sense. When you hear Musk, it, you think Colin and Samir. It was great. I, I loved it. I thought being live, you know, in audio form with all those people, having a public conversation with Jimmy and getting to interview a creator live was super cool. One of the things we talk about is like one of our favorite things to do is interview creators. And so getting to ask Jimmy questions live in front of, you know, thousands of people, which you're not actually in front of them. I was just in here was awesome. Um, and that's all wrapped up in, in the context of this episode being about the rise of audio anchored in the fact that David Dobrik just launched a video podcast and really thinking about podcasting audio as this next iteration of content, especially for YouTube creators. So we're going to get to that, but we do have some other company news to talk about. Yes, we do have some other company news. Uh, I can't wait till we have a sound for company news. Like, welcome to company news. And company news, if you're new to this podcast, is just a new segment that we've started where we're going to tell you updates about us, our company, what we're doing, pretty quick. And then we'll get into the episode. Feels like if you're out there and you're listening and you're someone capable of making a company news jingle. Mm, I like that. Yeah. I'm interested in seeing what that sounds like. Yep. All right. So let's start with company news. If you're watching the video version of this podcast, you probably see the first piece of company news, which is my haircut. Why is that a big deal? Well, it's because the first episode of the year, I offered a hundred dollars to someone who could guess the date that I actually would cut my hair. And February 6th was the day that you cut your hair and Jackson Krajnak, hope I'm pronouncing that right, four weeks ago commented on that podcast and said, February 6th, I'm calling it. Yeah. So Jackson, I owe you a hundred bucks. I'm going to Venmo you a hundred bucks. Uh, I'll, I'll hit you up. We'll do it. Uh, you know, we'll figure it out, but dude, congrats. You want a hundred bucks today. I also got a haircut and nothing was on the line other than that's true. Yeah. My appearance. <laughs> Right. So it's just a normal Which haircut. Which actually is something- well, There's a lot on the there's line. There's a lot on the yeah, line. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. on the line. Always has been, every time. Yeah. Um, I have to take a step back from all of this right now because we didn't address something. What's that? A podcast that's been one of my favorite podcasts for a long time is How I Built This. Oh, man. This is crazy company news. Yesterday, while Colin and I are in this clubhouse room, Guy Raz, the Guy Raz, <laughs> the host of How I Built This, followed both of us on Clubhouse. I kind of like took, took my breath away. A it, bit. it was shocking. I was like, that's Guy Raz. That's, I, I recommend that podcast to a lot of people. All the time. That's Guy Raz. That's the guy I listened to for years who's yeah. inspired me to do so many different things. And he's following me on Clubhouse and you. Yeah. But like, and me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't. Followed you first. Um, you got you texting me saying that, that Guy Raz just followed you in the middle of our chat. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, wow, that's amazing. Hopefully he follows me. And I was just staring at the screen and then it said, Guy Raz follows you. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah, Guy, it was Guy Raz yeah. and MKBHD followed me. And yeah, those were the two that kind of like awesome. shook me. Yeah. I was okay. fine with the speaking to well, Mr. Beast in front of 5,000 people. <laughs> but when those two notifications yeah. came across my phone, I, I lost my breath a little bit. What do you think one of the highlights was what Beast said last night? Like, was there something that you heard from him that you were like, whoa? I don't know. I've listened to a lot of Jimmy interviews. So I feel like I had, I had a general pulse of where he was going to go. Yeah. I, I thought it was interesting when he talked about hiring and, you know, I, I've talked to Jimmy on the phone a couple of times about this stuff, but around 
how the learning curve for someone to really understand how to work at Mr. Beast is six to eight months of them following him around and just learning how he operates and then they're ready to work. Mm -hmm. So you start to think about the learning curve of going to work for a creator is so high because they just do things their own way. There's no like formula yet to really. I mean, also, if you're if you're someone like Mr. Beast or you're any type of creator that's been on the platform for 10 years, you have 10 years of firsthand experience in failure on that platform. And right. there is no substitute really for that. You know, you are committed to something and you fail, you remember what you did wrong so you don't do it again next time. It's a much different experience to bring someone totally new in and teach them about what's right versus what's wrong. And I think it's just this, this, it's part of the nature of innovation. Like every creator actually is innovating, even though they're within a platform, they're still innovating. They're creating a new brand, they're creating new ideas, they're coming up with you know, all this stuff that's relatively innovative. And one of the most innovative people on the platform has been David Dobrik. And we talked about that in an earlier podcast where we talked about his introduction of this short form vlog, which was like condensed storytelling of, of multiple bits leading up to like this four minute, 20 second, unbelievable action packed clip focused show that was, that was amazing. Now Dobrik's been off YouTube for a year. I mean, we're talking about probably one or two episodes of David Dobrik on YouTube this year, but he dropped something this week that I think basically was his, Hey guys, I'm back. But it was also I also had an amazing year because of the house he bought. <laughs> like when you really think, this guy went off YouTube and we've made videos about this. He went super hard at TikTok. He had different television shows and different deals. He just got nominated for a Kids' Choice Award for Social Star of the Year. And uh, he, he bought this new house. And all the while, he's been podcasting. He hasn't missed a podcast. And that was something that I mentioned to you. I listen to views every week. I think it's, a, it's super funny. It's a very fun podcast, but he never missed a podcast. And wrapped in this house tour was, was an announcement. So I think it was just take, like, take us through what happened this week with David Dobrik. If people didn't watch the David Dobrik 2 video, which I think most of you did because it has over 7 million views. Yeah, it's number two on trending yeah. right now. He released a video uh, giving a tour of his new $9.5 million home in Sherman Oaks. And the first Four minutes of six minutes are people's reactions, basically. Uh, members of the vlog squad coming in and seeing his home for the first time. He has all types of ridiculous things in the home. He has a fountain that, instead of dispensing water, dispenses fruit punch, which is very- You know what's cool? That was- Willy Wonka of him. That was made by a creator. It really? was made by Unnecessary Inventions, who's a subscriber of ours. Oh, Shout nice. out. Uh, so yeah, a lot of the stuff that was in his house was made by creators, yes. which I thought was cool. So then in- uh, as it gets to about the four minute mark, he does a read for current and then introduces you to his new podcast set for views and announces that he will be putting out one episode a week on his podcast channel. And it's uh, really like incredible high production, multiple camera angles. Uh, I think everything that you would want a video podcast to be. He also in this episode gives away two cars just casually, which is like something we're becoming immune to with Dobrik. Uh, and in the past, really, there has been no video version of his podcast. No, I mean, there's, there was a time where he wasn't even that consistent with views. Like he wasn't necessarily uploading every week. Um, and, and it was interesting. I think obviously this was in the works because he got super consistent. It was like Tuesday mornings. It it just went live. Um, and I noticed just because I'm, I'm a listener. And so it shifted. It used to be Mondays. I don't know. Anyway, it got super consistent. So obviously, this was in the works. Um, building a set within his house is really smart. It's something that Logan Paul did. It's something that uh, David's friends, Keith and Zane did. It's something that Matt King and Mike Sheffer, when you look at the vlog squad, they're all kind of going in this podcast direction. Even you look at Joe Volpes and Ilya, they launched a podcast together. So like everyone in the vlog squad launched a podcast and converting it into video is something that's just, it's a home run if you are especially that scale. We made a video about video podcast. Yeah. I think the interesting thing is we, we made a video May 8th, 2018. So about three years ago called why every YouTuber has a podcast. And, you know, three years ago, we make the case that a podcast channel and launching a podcast is a great way for a creator to make a lot more content and upload more frequently and have less burnout and make longer form content, which surfaces on YouTube because of watch time. Uh, so it's a really low lift way to be more present on the platform. And we encourage creators three years ago to start podcast channels, 
start recording their podcasts and putting them out on YouTube. Three years later, we finally took that advice. Yeah. So here we, we are. We definitely should have started that earlier on. Uh, here we are. But we still think the same thing. Like it's it's a really smart thing to do. You're increasing your frequency. You're driving tons of watch time and higher average view duration. Like for example, on this channel, it's our highest average view duration by far per video and overall on the channel um, than any other YouTube content we've ever made because people are watching for longer. Um, the, the, the third thing I think is also that the opportunity to convert an hour of recording into multiple pieces of content it's just you're taking one hour and you're converting it into 15 pieces of content rather than, you know, you're taking, uh, David, I think you used to talk about taking a week and pushing it down into one piece of content. That's really amazing. Um, this, I think, just is more sustained. It's a more sustainable strategy. Now, let's add to it that if you're going to make a podcast and you're just going to put it out on an RSS feed, audio only, there's really no chance for mass discoverability, right, to scale that one podcast and have it essentially go viral. That's very difficult to do because of the nature of how podcast platforms are. But if you record your podcast, you title and thumbnail it correctly, especially if you're a YouTube creator and you have a knowledge of what it means to title and thumbnail correctly, and you're taking advantage of YouTube and Google as a search platform. So you can drive actually far more viewership, far more listens, and the chance that someone will discover you and you'll find a lot more scale is there on YouTube, but it's not necessarily there on other traditional podcast platforms. Views, awesome, awesome podcast. I think they've said they've had, they're very highly ranked podcast. Number seven comedy podcast on Spotify, I believe, right? Number seven comedy podcast on Spotify. They're in the top hundred, you know, just in the US. Like they, they are a very, very highly ranked podcast, but have not yet had video. And so you think about exactly what you just said. Let's just say, let's play with the number 1 million. Let's say a million people listen per episode, which it's likely more than that, but let's use that as our base. Also, it's important to note that that's a lot. Like pod, podcasting, podcasting that that's get a five lot. to ten thousand, yeah, in that range are considered in the upper echelon. Yeah, or even like twenty five thousand, twenty five thousand downloads yeah. per episode. Like it's even like, getting to five to ten thousand is very difficult in the podcast world. Like, yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. on YouTube, and, and those, those views may come a little bit more naturally to a larger group of people. Right, and and it's it's because of what you just said. It's not a search platform, really. You know, like yeah. you, you're not necessarily in the art. You're not opening up Spotify and searching for a topic. See what's tr yeah yeah. You really have to fall in love with the hosts like Guy Raz. Thanks for the follow, Guy. And if you fall in love with the host, then you're just there. Like for me, with, with David and Jason, I think they're really funny. And I love hearing about the vlog squad and it's fun to listen to. And um, you hear all these inside bits and I listen every week, no matter what. So let's say it's a million yeah. downloads. So let's call it a million downloads. So now let's get into the topic and the title that you clicked on here around a hundred million dollar acquisition from Spotify and why we think that's, that's potential. Should we do some calculations here? Let's just go back to sure. the true podcast, like pre-video. Right now, David's running like four ads on average per podcast. Let's give him a $25 CPM. Okay. So let's do some quick math. So that's $25,000 per ad, four ads, $100,000 in advertising on a single episode. Four episodes a month, that's $400,000 mm -hmm. a month times 12 months. That's 1.8 million. Oh. Well, let's see. $400,000 yeah. a month. We were talking before and we said, let's be conservative and call it $3,000 a month. So $3,000 uh, okay, a you're month. Right, you're right, yeah, okay. Comes out to 3.6 million a year that he would be generating yeah. from the RSS feed without it, video. It feels low. Um, but again, we just said it's a, conservative, it's a conservative ballpark, but let's just call it 3.6 million. Um, like, I think then you start to realize when you add video to the mix, what's possible, right? Yeah, and then that's probably where you're looking at more of where the Joe Rogan podcast deal came in. Because mm -hmm. Joe Rogan's been on YouTube for a long time. Joe Rogan's podcast channel has 10 million subscribers. His clips channel has like five or 8 million subscribers, I think. Yeah. So Joe Rogan's doing 190 million listens per month. Which is crazy. At a $15 CPM we have here in our research, that's 2.85 million per month or 35 million per year. At that rate, Spotify would recoup its 100 million that they paid in under three years. So that's kind of how that math can shake out. When you, look, when you really start to understand that math, you start to realize Joe Rogan's $100 million deal with Spotify is actually like not that crazy. And with David adding video to views. So now let's, let's talk about the video version of views, which just got added. 
And let's also talk about why David, outside of money, of course, is like an interesting reason to sure. convert to video. But what is why yeah. does David want to move into a video version of a podcast? Considering he's someone who is very deliberate and cares about every single little moment that goes into mm -hmm. one of his four minute and 20 second vlogs, why now is he okay with 12 minutes, well, eight minutes? Number one, on when, YouTube. The, when the pandemic started, we, this is in our video, David was very vocal about the fact that he wasn't going to make the vlog unless he could make it exactly how it's supposed to be made, which is like going to bars, action packed with strangers. Like it's something that wasn't able to be created in, the, in a COVID world. So he turned to TikTok, stuff that he could create at home. He, he also has mentioned on views before that he always wants to make like the most relatable content in a day. So he put out like a really funny uh, TikTok and tweet one day where he said, when parents feed their kids and they say, here comes the choo-choo train, are they saying C-H-O-O -O, or are they saying C-H-E-U? Like chew, yeah, chew. Yeah, I saw that. And he said he spent all day thinking about that. And he just wanted to put out the most relatable thing there was. And so I think David over the past year has kind of converted from being the most unrelatable at times in his vlog where Kylie Jenner's in there, Justin Bieber's in there. He's living a Hollywood life. He's at, I would argue though, that he's the relatable he's the, one that yes. you're seeing this story through. Agreed. He's yeah. the relatable. He's like your human connection to the extraordinary world. Yeah. But his content as a whole was like kind of unrelatable um, and aspirational. And I think he's now converting like TikTok made his content. So every day, like it was just David, the everyday guy doing relatable things on TikTok. So this is a long way of saying that I think podcasting gives you the more like relatable David. And like you just mentioned, his vlog was the aspirational unrelatable thing. David as the relatable person, like what's another version of that? It's a talk show where you have one host who's the relatable one who brings on people who you want access to. It's the same thing we talked about at the top of the show with Clubhouse, where it's like marquee interviews. And David, the thing about David is he plays the character or plays this relatable person to us, but he's actually a massive celebrity. And he has uh, the, the goal of becoming a late night talk show host. Mm -hmm. He said it before a lot, right? Like he is now actually Fallon with his YouTube video version of his podcast. Yes. He's sitting behind a desk. He've got, he's got Halsey. He's got high profile guests, mm -hmm. right? And now audiences at scale can get comfortable to seeing David Dobrik as a host behind a desk over long periods of time. So he can grow that audience that likes seeing him behind a desk. Mm -hmm. And then maybe eventually this he's really ready to make the jump to late night. You look at like Lily Singh, right? When yeah. she made that jump, a lot of her show was based on sketches on late night. Well, I, I'd like to take a step back and say, I don't think he's going to make a jump. I think he's made the jump. I think this is late night. Like when I, think I this look will at always exist, but I do wonder because I think David Dobrik like still plays in the traditional world more yeah. than any other YouTube creator. That's true. I think there's an aspiration there of like when he is on Fallon's show that that really, uh, he feels that in a major way of like what it would mean to be in a Jimmy Fallon position and to do it times 10. I understand that. I just think that when I see this set when I, and I see the way it's shot, to me, it's like I'm watching late night yeah. because I also watch Corden and Fallon on YouTube. It's all on YouTube. Anyway. So it's all on YouTube anyway. So uh, Dobrik's now like views and Dobrik is another version of late night to me. And to now talk about the scale thing that we talked about with Joe Rogan, I don't know. I don't know Dobrik's numbers. You know, maybe he is doing much more. Like we, we conservatively are saying he's doing 4 million new listens a month. What's he doing on the library, right? He's probably doing a ton. It might be 10 million. But I think what YouTube does is David Dobrik 2, that episode right now has 7 million views. In another week, it'll have 10 million views, right? Which introduced his new podcast set. The podcast channel, I think by now probably has a million subscribers and likely will have more by the time you're listening to this. The podcast clip with him surprising Natalie with Halsey is seven minutes long. It's a podcast. So, uh, sorry, it's a podcast clip. It's not the full episode of the podcast on the channel. All that clip is doing is getting more people to listen to the podcast and increasing the average listenership on the RSS feed and of the show as a whole. And so the brand of views is now going to grow to a scale that is really, really competitive with some of the top podcasts on Spotify, on the podcast app, um, and that's what YouTube does. Cause like you said, 
YouTube is a search platform. So if people are searching things or think something's trending, like videos can go viral on YouTube and viral videos as a funnel for podcasting where you build a weekly listener is what's going to change the game for David. Because like you don't currently listen to views every week, right? Mm -mm. But like over time, if you keep getting hit with these clips that are really amazing, you might become a weekly listener. Well, that's how I feel about Impulsive. That's how I feel about the Tiny Meat Gang. Right. Like, any of those podcasts, I'm just consuming through clips. Like one of the hardest things when you're starting out as a creator is to be consistent and to give the YouTube algorithm what it wants, to go once a week at least, if not two times a week or three. And if you're having a difficult time getting content out once a week, I think no matter what level of creator you are, you should take a hard look at turning your podcast into a video version, mm -hmm. even just from a production standpoint mm -hmm. of, can I sit once a week and go for 45 minutes and take multiple different shots on YouTube three times a week at a title thumbnail and learn from yeah, that. And, and you don't feel like I will say from personal experience, if a podcast doesn't hit right now, for me, I'm not going to feel like, I don't know. It just, it's like, okay, let's try again. Like, let's yeah. keep going. And, and whereas on the main channel, yeah, if we put like three th or four weeks into a video and it doesn't hit, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of devastating. Oh, it's super <laughs> it's devastating. Really yeah. And, and there's so much pressure on it. And here, the goal for us on this podcast channel is to go multiple times a week. So like once we build this one time a week cadence, can we build two? And then the other thing we're thinking about is clips. Can we build out a clips channel? And that's because we should read some of the stats that we've pulled in our research about clips uh, and clips channels. Okay, so if you look at Impulsive, Logan Paul's podcast, the clips channel total has 227 million views on that channel. His main channel for Impulsive, which has the long form episodes, has 301 million views. So there's more views on the main channel, but those are really comparable. Dude, I mean, let's look at these. I mean, 13 in the clips channel, though, 13 million views in the past 30 days. On the main channel, 9 million views in the past 30 days. Yeah, so the Clips channel outperforming the main channel currently. And, and it's the same content. It's just, cu it's curated better. So you start to realize like, wait a second. So when you record a video podcast, not only do you have th like this channel right now, which is soon to be called the Colin and Samir Show, but we have like Colin and Samir Show channel right here, right? Mm -hmm. Then we take this recording and put it on a channel called Colin and Samir Clips. And now even if it performs almost the same, we are doubling our viewership and increasing our opportunity for more fandom. And overall, we, it, something that we talked about with, with Clubhouse is brand equity, overall building out the brand equity of Colin and Smear. And that frequency is so important. Like views now showing up in video form multiple times a week, it can get passed around on Twitter, on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube. It can go viral on YouTube, on the trending page. And even if it's a three, four minute clip, the set the view set is going to become something that we see way more. Yeah, and, and that's not just about hitting the algorithm. That's actually right. about community building. Yeah. Uh, brand building, but also community building. If you can go frequent, like more mm -hmm. frequently, right? Like the, to even talk about week to week when you're going to cut your hair or company news. Sure. Those are opportunities for us to make sure that everyone's updated with what's happening mm -hmm. and to feel like there's a common narrative. Whereas if we make a really good breakdown video once a month, that's good but it's not going to be the biggest driver of community. Right. So Cody Co, Noel Miller, Tiny Meat Gang, we all know, or if you've watched us for a while, you know their Patreon numbers. <laughs> Very 80, impressive. 80,000 a month. Almost $80,000 a month that they do on Patreon for um, exclusive podcasts. But let's talk about Tiny Meat Gang versus Tiny Meat Gang clips. So 2 million views in the past 30 days on the Tiny Meat Gang podcast channel, full-length podcasts. 1.9 million views on the clips channel in the past 30 days. Almost exactly the same, right? Basically doubling your amount of viewership and exposure. So total views, Tiny Meat Gang uh, channel, 65 million views total for Tiny Meat Gang podcast. Clips, 66 million total views. It's really making us think about clips. clips. <laughs> All right, so let's look at the H3H3 channel. H3H3 podcast channel, 27 million views in the last 30 days, 12 million views on the Clips channel in the past 30 days. On the podcast channel, 398 million views total. On their main channel, 669 million views on the Clips channel. That's, that's Doubled insane. Doubled it up on the Clips channel. 
So you start to realize the value of podcasting. And the value for someone like David Dobrik is when he was vlogging even once a week, his face, his brand, it was everywhere. But the value of it is putting it into video form and mm -hmm. uploading it specifically to YouTube. Yeah. Right? Because you look at Joe Rogan's podcast, which now has the full versions on Spotify as video. Clips are still on YouTube, but if you want to watch a full video version of a Joe Rogan podcast, you have to go to Spotify. And we looked and saw in the comments that a lot of fans are kind of disgruntled that there's no ability to comment on Spotify. Yeah, it's not a community. No really community. It's there's not a community building platform, Spotify. You're not like a part of a community on Spotify. Like even me listening to views on Spotify, there's no way really of me knowing that other, some of my other friends have listened to that episode can't talk to anyone. I can't laugh about a joke. I can't respond to anything. Like there's no community platform. I go to Spotify for audio, period. Someone asked us about this on Clubhouse and I made this reference of, um, I don't know how much each of these platforms can do. I don't know if I'm old school. You guys can agree or disagree with this, but when I go to a, a, a certain app, I'm going for one reason. When I open Spotify, I'm looking for music, or podcasts in audio form. I'm open Spotify with the intention of not looking at my phone. So if you give me a video there, it's very confusing for me. I'm like not used to it. And then I, I turn it and it's like, I can't comment. I can't, I can't do anything that I'm used to. I can't browse other videos. Like it's yeah. not a video platform for me. And you likened it to your favorite restaurant, right? There's a certain yeah, restaurant so, that does burgers. There's a certain restaurant that does you know those, burritos. See, this is a thing here in LA. I don't know if this is a thing other places. It might be, it, is. it might be, but you know, those places that say like donuts and Chinese food. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, what? Hold on. Are you donuts or are you Chinese food? Am I walking in for a nice tasty treat or some chow mein? Like what am I walking in for? And that's the issue. When I open an app, I don't want it to be donuts and Chinese food. I want it to be either. There's a different place I go for the Chinese food and a different place I go for the donuts. Give me two different places. Again, I might be old school uh, and maybe everyone wants consolidated apps, but I don't. I don't want like to open my Headspace app right now and do, see Kevin Hart on there, which is what's happening doing like some comedy bit or something. And then there's workouts like but Peloton. do you want to see Harry Styles on the Com app? Of course. Uh, see, maybe you just don't like Kevin Hart. But do you see Harry Styles? Or no, do you, you hear, hear Harry, Harry Styles? Styles? You're right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, man. You open Com for an audio experience. You'd be okay if you were looking at Harry Styles? I don't think so. Really? Yeah, because then it's, it's, it, it com completely changes their value prop. And I think Com's doing a good job mm -hmm. of it. Like they run these ads that say like, put down your phone for 15 seconds. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just a... Uh, a big fan of Harry Styles. There, there's some realizations that I've come to throughout this uh, quarantine and throughout this pandemic. One of them recently was that when this is all over, I'm going to a Harry Styles concert. All right. What? <laughs> what are we talking about? No, I just like, I, just, I was so passionate have, about, have, the, have you thought about that the though? That, like there's certain thing. things that you really want to do once this is all over. It's travel. You, you've thrown me off completely <laughs> right now. Like, oh, uh, you've thrown this, you've taken this conversation, which was on a train tracks, just like going straight and you've derailed it. Okay. But do you disagree? Uh, I'm very impressed with Harry Styles. I'll tell you, I'm going to bring this conversation right back. I'll tell you where I actually got most into and impressed with Harry Styles, which was his appearances on late night, specifically on James Corden. When he did that with Kendall spill your guts or feel your guts with Kendall. I thought he was a fantastic host. Loved him. Thought he was great. The chemistry too. The chemistry, the chemistry was undeniable. out of this world. Undeniable. undeniable. I think they'll end up together. Mm, but I don't know about that. Harry Styles is someone who probably will end up on views. The thing is, in video form now, with the opportunity to have clips, you heard Halsey say it. She, she, you know, maybe was half joking, maybe wasn't, but she was like, one of my goals for 2021 was to be in a David Dobrik video. I think now you've just created a whole new wave of collaborations for David Dobrik where he's going to have really top tier celebrities sitting in that chair in the views studio. Oh yeah. I mean, Kylie Jenner is going to be sitting there. Justin Bieber is going to be sitting there. You're going to have big actors. I, I mean, I could see how this is going to change the game. And again, just to go back about Joe Rogan doing 190 million listens a month, views is going to get there and they're going to get there because they're now on YouTube as a video podcast. Cause the funnel just got a lot bigger. Views is going to do 10 million views a month at one point, and then it might push to Dobrik's style of 
his vlog channel doing 100 million views a month. If he starts doing 100 million views on a podcast channel, I also think he might be able to monetize it better. It's longer form. Definitely. It's probably the expectation will be that it's like a talk show and um, it's just going to be completely different. Now, let's go back to those statistics and those kind of like the, the projection that we made. So let's say Spotify does want the David Dobrik podcast for $100 million. And right now we just projected that it's doing... What? What did we say? 3.6 million. We said 3.6 million. Which is yeah. likely low. But that's based off just but, audio only. Yeah. So the video version brings it into a totally new realm. So the question is, if that could 10x, which it likely can based on YouTube viewership, right? If his viewership can 10x, which we're saying a million people listening an episode, you know, that means 4 million. Can he get to 40 million people listening a month? I mean, he definitely did that on YouTube before with people watching him. So if he can get to 40 million people, he's 10 x He's in, you know, let's say $36 million a year after one year of really doing this, which, is, which would be crazy. Then $100 million doesn't feel that crazy for Spotify. Puts, puts him closer to that Joe Rogan range. Yeah. So that's the, that's what the end of the story. What I wonder though is, does it make sense for YouTube to provide a little bit more incentive and to really focus on these video versions of podcasts. I think they have to be looking at it right now because like somebody, somebody's going to do this, right? Like, and it's not, I, I, right and now- Joe, they, Full episodes of Joe Rogan were huge on huge. YouTube. Like, yeah. It brought a lot of people to YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I think the same way that YouTube really took a hard look at gaming, especially when Twitch was picking up and they were like, you know what? YouTube gaming needs to be more of a thing. And now YouTube gaming is very significant. I think maybe YouTube podcasting is going to become a thing. Now, should we take a look at some of the acquisitions that have happened in the past year when it comes to podcasts? Of course, we're seeing creator podcasting is massive. Addison Ray has a podcast and that's, you know, she's, she's one of many that have gotten podcast deals. Lele Pons has a podcast deal. And there was a quote that was in our research that was really great around, um, uh, right here. So this is from Courtney Holt. She's uh, Spotify's head of studios and videos. She said, we want to work with creators across a wide range. Uh, social media influencers is a great place for us to be looking for new emerging established and diverse talent. One thing David mentioned on his podcast is that he's reading Frankenstein. He's doing like an audio book for Spotify. The Spotify pulling creators in, someone at YouTube should be like, hey, wait, shouldn't, shouldn't we shouldn't have these we, offerings? Yeah. Shouldn't we be holding on to podcasting talent? There's something about YouTube missing out on some of their top creators. Mm -hmm. I think it's really interesting. Even I, during the Super Bowl, they had the ad for YouTube Originals directed by Ridley Scott. Yeah, I think that's very cool. But but yeah. but where have it directed? You have a lot of originals that are also with YouTube creators. Yeah, have it directed by Peter McKinnon. That ad. Like, why not uh, be part of elevating your creators into that national? international stage MKBHD, and limelight. MKBHD had an awesome YouTube original. With the retro tech. Yeah. yeah, why not put that front and center and start to make that a little bit more normalized? That like you would see yeah. a YouTube series like that from a homegrown YouTuber during a commercial at the Super Bowl. I think Ridley Scott, like any brand could work with Ridley Scott. Yeah. I think their fear has always been around creators. You know, I think Logan Paul added a lot to that fear yeah. about creators and how unpredictable they are. Logan, something we didn't talk about, about his podcast and the frequency of it is, in my opinion, and I think conversations we've had, he's been able to rebuild his brand through, through his podcast. podcast. And he was able to change his narrative by putting out two podcasts a week. As a note, Impulsive has been going on for since late 2018, I think. And he's done almost 100 more episodes than views. And Impulsive, I mean, Impulsive has... Like now impulsive might be competing, you know, with, uh, Im impulsive clips, for example, has 227 million views, like impulsive clips. And like, the, like Logan Paul as a podcaster is becoming more significant than Logan Paul as a YouTuber. And, and that I think when it comes down to guests too, you look at Logan has booked a certain type of guest for the last couple of years because of the controversy he came off of. Mm -hmm. And he's starting to trend, of course, into more mainstream guests. He had Rob Gronkowski on. Yeah. You know, before the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. Dobrik, yeah he's having huge guests. So um, look at what, you know, Logan Paul can do over time in terms of booking huge guests. You can only imagine, again, 
what David Dobrik, Dobrik is going to be doing Dobrik's in terms gonna of have guess. crazy guess. I mean, he's probably, he'll probably have Robert Downey Jr. on. Yeah. At some point, you know, you might have Leonardo DiCaprio on like that is it's late night and they can all understand it. Hollywood can understand a video podcast because it looks like a talk show. It looks like late night and it's perfect because YouTube audiences now they clearly like it. We're seeing it in the, the stats of our podcast channel. All right. So to these acquisitions, Amazon buys Wondery as the podcast race continues. That's the headline uh, from December 30th. They acquired it for three hundred million dollars. New York Times bought the production company behind Serial, which is a great podcast, uh, for $25 million. Uh, the New York Times also acquired another uh, app that turns long-form journalism into audio for $8.6 million. Twitter recently acquired Breaker, which, is a, uh, uh, which was a podcasting company, and I'm not, uh, maybe they're using them to, to launch spaces. I'm not sure. Um, Sirius XM to buy Stitcher for $300 million. Like we and are, then you have Spotify's round of acquisitions that came, right? Whether it was Gimlet Media for 189 million dollars, Anchor at 150 million, Parcast 54 million, and The Ringer somewhere around 170 million, which so, all came around a similar time. This is a lot of money getting thrown around for podcasting, and I think creators yeah. know that they can. Like Casey Casey Neistat when he first started podcasting, this is a while ago, and he he did it for short period of time, he was number one the week he launched. And most creators, like Impulsive was number one the week they launched. Most creators, like you mentioned, can hit a, a critical mass that is just like, it, it, it skyrockets them to the level of like top 10. I mean, MKBHD is in the top 10 mm -hmm. um, in his category. Dobrik, like we mentioned, is top 10. Uh, Tiny Meat Gang is top 10, like total, you know? And then you have companies like Barstool Sports with Call Her Daddy, which I think is like the number two podcast. So, podcasting as a whole, as like, just as it pertains to what we just talked about, it's not only here to stay, but it's like, it's very hot right now. And video forms create the biggest funnel for you to grow a repeat loyal audience and turn that audience into a community. Video form on YouTube. On YouTube. Yeah. Specifically. That's, it's that's, not that's just an important video. note. Yeah. yeah. Cause again, the Spotify video, is just not it for me right now. Oh, there's nowhere else that's like YouTube where you can take advantage of Google search. That's it. Um, all right. Well, we'd love to hear from you guys. You know, we hear from you guys now a lot more on Twitter, which is awesome. But like we just mentioned, this is a YouTube video, so you can put your thoughts in the comments. Uh, the comment section is just such a specific thing to YouTube. It's what makes things great. Do you think Dobrik's views will get acquired by Spotify? Or do you think we'll see something completely different? Like, do you think a studio, like a Hollywood studio picks it up? Do you think CBS comes in and is like, we'll take views? You know, like, who, would any of you who, even watch a podcast on Spotify also? No, no. Come on. Like, does anyone here watch Joe Rogan on Spotify or did it just get lost? Like his video podcast? Whenever I'm watching video on Spotify, it's surprising to me. Like I pick up my phone because I'm playing mm -hmm. something yeah. and it happens to be playing a video and I'm like, what is that? Same thing, man. You walk into a donut shop and like, why, like, are you, why are you wasting energy on this phone? I'm not watching. Yeah. You walk into a donut shop, donut shop and they offer you low main. When was the last time you walked into a donut shop? For your birthday that one time on Abbot Kinney. It's like four years ago. Four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for listening to this episode. Thanks for watching this episode and make sure to put your comments. What do you think about Dobrik's new podcast? What do you think about views? And what do you think is going to happen with it? Like who's going to buy it? And also who's the, who's the next big celebrity on it? Who do you think, Cole, after Halsey? Like uh, predict the next celebrity. John Stamos? John Stamos it's would be, be great. John Stamos or it's going to be... Uh, a Jenner? No. Uh, what's his name? Dylan Francis? No. Josh Peck? Josh Peck. Josh Peck would be Josh fun. Peck. Yeah. Josh Peck would be fun. And uh, last thing to predict, by the end of February, how many subscribers does the Viewed Views podcast channel have? I'll go 5 million. 4 million. Okay. But if you haven't subscribed to this podcast... Please subscribe to this podcast. We're trying to get to 25,000 subscribers. Like this video if you haven't already, because that does really help when you like the video to push this video. I had no idea how much it helps, but it really helps. All right. Thanks for listening, watching, viewing, subscribing, commenting, and we will see you next week. Peace. Woo!